monsters, myths, and legends. That's what we're going to talk about today on a special Q&A edition of the Cub Cooker Supernatural Podcast. What's up, everyone? My name is Jacob Cooker, but my friends call me Cub, and you should too, right here on the Cub Cooker Supernatural Podcast, where we discuss faith, spirituality, in the paranormal every single day. Right now, we are in the middle of a Halloween series. We are continually studying the Book of Enoch. Uh, and if you have not joined the Book of Enoch study, it happens uh, kind of sporadically through the podcast here. Uh, but I normally try to do that in the afternoons. But today, I wanted to take a bit of a sidetrack from the Book of Enoch we've been studying and talk about monsters, myths, and lore uh, specifically found a really cool tool that we're going to be going through and looking at a bunch of them all around Google Earth. Google Earth actually has a myths and legends from around the world prompt on it, and you can look that up just by Googling myth and, myths and legends from around the world Google Earth, and it will take you to a very special page um, that has a bunch of these myths and legends uh, pinned around the world. So we're going to talk about them today. As I drive around, uh, my dogs love to go on drives and they love to go look at all of the decorations that are out for Halloween and then uh, for Christmas. So we get to see a lot of the blow ups and the different caricatures. And so we've got the artwork in the background today for uh, that theme. But it really made me think, you know, where does all of this come from? You see the Dracula, you see uh, the zombies, you see. Uh, the different mythologies played out, even in cartoon type characters that people put on their lawns, uh, or there's t shirts with them, there's uh, stickers, decals, uh, even the caricatures on the bags of candy that we have around Halloween uh, are all from some sort of mythology. So uh, we're going to look at some of that today and see where that might have come from. Uh, but this particular page on the myths and legends from around the world. Uh, says legends and stories based on real people or events in history or tied to a specific place. Um, they may describe larger than life exploits or become exaggerated or change over time, but legends have a strong base in history and geography. While legends are based in history, myths are based on religion or faith systems uh, and explain natural phenomenon rather than tell a historical story. Many cultures have myths describing the same natural occurrences, how the world began, why the seasons change, what causes lightning, or why volcanoes erupt. Myths may include supernatural beings like Greek or Roman gods, and may include lessons about how to behave. The myths and legends explored here are from China, India, Italy, the United States, Australia, Greece, Egypt, and Scandinavia. So we're going to go through these, and like I said, if you get a chance, uh, what's up, Gene? How are you doing? If you get a chance, go join uh, this over on Google Earth uh, on your own, and it's it's a pretty cool study into this. So, um, and again, you know my opinion here on the Supernatural podcast um, is that you know these myths and legends are all not just describing natural phenomenon as Google Earth states. But I personally believe that they are describing legitimate supernatural entities um, as in uh, beings that can manifest themselves. They can avatar with people. They can manifest themselves as actual extraterrestrial beings, that type of thing. Um, so that's more my belief about like what the old gods are, that they were actual beings that were interacted with from different star systems, different parts of our universe. Uh, what would be considered angels in the Bible, servants of God, supposedly serving into the brilliant fractal nature of uh, the mind of God that we all exist in, um, but not necessarily always doing a good job with that. Um, and then that's where uh, all of the uh, unbalance and the judgments, you know, you hear about all the apocalyptic books. Uh, specifically in biblical literature, but in a lot of other literatures. Uh, that's where a lot of that comes from, is that, you know, the rebalancing of the scales, if you will. So all of this big, big picture stuff, guys. And that's what I love doing here on the podcast. So uh, let's get into it. Let's look at a few things. Uh, like I said, 
We are a multicultural, multi-faith, multi-race, multi-orientation community. We accept anyone into this community as long as you're here in love and light and unity and just seeking the authentic reality together. Uh, we're not a conspiratorial channel at all, so keep the comments uh, purely out of curiosity and not any kind of us versus them mentality because that's not that doesn't help anyone achieve a higher vibration, a higher state of consciousness. And that's ultimately what we're here to do. So getting into these creepy tales for today uh, and myths and legends, uh, as we hear about them, I'm trying to change the background, not the shape of my camera, but apparently that's what's going to happen today. So, uh, cause I made several backgrounds for you guys. There's another cool one. Um, let's see, which one do I like? I like the purple. That one's kind of cool. So we'll go with that one. Um, so if you have any questions, like I said, drop them down below and I'm happy to answer as we continue the podcast. So going over to China, the great race, the story of the Chinese Zodiac. And I'm going to read these directly off the website, guys. Like I said, you know, you, you go watch them. They even have videos with them. There's some cool stuff on here. Uh, and you can really dive into your understanding of these mythologies. So. This legend explains how the Chinese calendar was created. The Chinese calendar is based on the movements of the moon, a lunar cycle. So each month uh, is one full moon cycle. The calendar also has a 12-year cycle with each year named after an animal. The Chinese believe that your personality resembles the animal of your birth year. Now, this is one of the mythologies that I actually get on with. Um, the 12-year solar cycle is something that I think we completely ignore. And if you start to uh, explore Eastern philosophy, you understand like the karmic cycles go in 12-year cycles or 12-year-ish cycles. Uh, the moon cycles, you know, being um, the actual month, if you follow like a moon calendar, it's a 13-month moon calendar, and it's going to help uh, kind of put everything together. Uh, hey, what's up, Dragon Lady? How are you doing? I hope you guys are having an awesome day. I uh, tell my nephew, I said, what's up? And uh, yes, we are ready for Thanksgiving. Looking forward to seeing family and friends and you guys are here. So uh, thank you for joining today. And uh, definitely looking forward to seeing y'all. So, uh, And by the way, speaking of Thanksgiving, everyone, uh, if you're listening on the podcast afterwards or you're watching on Facebook or YouTube, uh, we've got a really cool study coming up in November, where we're going to talk about the energies of gratitude, like actually projecting energies out into the universe of gratitude that begin to manifest and draw things to you. Um, you've probably heard some manifesting methods, but what I'm going to be sharing with you guys leading into the magic we are going to study in December is really honestly, I think, going to be life changing for a lot of people. It's something that I've been practicing and it has really changed the game when it comes to uh, what I'm experiencing in my everyday reality. So, uh, Dragon Lady says he's sleeping. Okay, good deal. Well, tell him when he wakes up. I said, what's up? Uh, so, there are different versions of the Zodiac legend. Uh, but in this story, the Jade Emperor, one of the Chinese gods, realized that without a calendar, people had trouble ke keeping track of time. Uh, he decided to create a calendar where each year was named after an animal. So I love this too. Like I'm a big spirit animal guy, but I really love the idea of this because especially for us here in the West, it's really hard to identify with March or April or May or like, what the heck does any of that mean anyway? You know, and, and following something like a Chinese calendar where, you know, you have months that are like literally after an animal and you can identify with that. One of my favorite quotes is from uh, a musician named Trevor Hall, and he's got some beautiful esoteric, new agey type music, whatever you want to call it. Uh, very singer songwriter music, and he does a lot of Eastern philosophy in it. One of the things he says is, "You've got to know your stars to know your soul." And one of the things that I think a lot of people miss out on, especially with Western faith systems, is understanding when we're born the energies we're born into, the animals that we get on with as far as like identify with, understanding things like spirit animals or our birth month. Uh, we just, we, we call this woo-woo and there's so many different systems of it that it's really hard to look at any of them and take them all seriously because there's so many different ones. 
but we also have to understand culturally it helps based on where you're where you're from so genealogically i'm from uh germanic descent particularly the nordic areas um and so like norse mythology is going to be something that uh genetically might be easier for me to understand so we're going to actually study a lot of norse mythology in the winter months as well too so uh which is really really interesting to me and i think it again helps everyone yeah odin actually ab absolutely and not the versions that you get in marvel by the way the 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 real versions of those mythologies are pretty wild and we're going to really get into a lot of that stuff which is something i'm excited because i want to learn about it so that's why we're doing it but uh so this is uh the legend of uh you know the the great chinese zodiac calendar um this article finishes by saying in the legend the animals have crossed a wide river uh the yangtze river is one of two major rivers in china it's the third longest in the world and the longest river to flow entirely in one country till the 1950s there were many bridges crossing the yangtze uh most people crossing using a ferry here is the bridge over the yangtze in najing uh, i'm sure i'm saying that wrong but uh, that it's a pretty big river. I mean, the boats just look like tiny specks on it. Again, go check this out. It's uh, myths and legends from around the world. Google Earth, you can Google it. So, uh, I watched the movie Valhalla over and over. Dude, I have not seen that. Wayne, um, is that good? I will definitely, uh, definitely check that out if it if it is. So, uh, yes, W O D E N Odin Odin. Um, I'll, I'll try to learn, you know, my, uh, heritage accent a little better before we do that study. So, um, Wayne says it's awesome. In my opinion. Awesome. I will check that out for sure. Uh, I'm always looking for good movies, good lore, good things to include in this. We talked about Pandora's box this morning. If you don't, if you didn't listen to the Pandora's box episode, I'll link it up above, but make sure you go check it out because, you know, if you want to understand like Garden of Eden mythology um, and how that ties into Greek mythology, it's pretty amazing. It's pretty amazing um, because Pandora's box was originally a vessel. It was actually a clay jar. Well, she was a clay vessel as well, just like we all are, right? Um, and so, you know, we're carbon-based life forms, the idea of dust to dust. Um, you have this imagery of the gods making her out of clay same thing with eve you know adam was made out of clay she was taken from adam um so these mythologies actually start to tie together more than we think especially in understanding as google said here understanding the nature of uh humanity the nature of uh, natural processes and systems which by the way all function based on these mathematical principles which uh, you know, if you're like me and you're a believer in the divine pattern, the divine fractal, uh, what many consider the Godhead, I, I believe we are a part of an intelligent mind of God, um, so big that we cannot fathom it yet so small that it's actually within us. And when we look within, uh, we are expanded without, um, and that to me is one of the most beautiful philosophies. And by the way, what I practice and what has helped me kind of deprogram from Western evangelical traditions that I had grown up with that it really were limiting in my factors of ascension. So, all right. Uh, Patan's pumpkin is an Indian myth from India. They've got a great video on this too. It says many cultures have a story about a great flood. Uh, this one is from Southern India. And instead of an ark or a boat, a farmer uses a giant pumpkin to save his family and animals from the rising water. This flood myth is told by the Arulia people who live in the foothills of the Sanhedra, of the Syadri Mountains. Syadri Mountains. I read a lot of Hebrew literature, so I was trying to say Sanhedrin, but uh, Syadri Mountains. Uh, they believe they are descendants of Patan. Many myths involve a fantastic sea voyage like the one or uh, the one of Jason and the Argonauts. Oh, interesting. See, I just learned something too. Uh, after the flood, Patton or Patan 
builds a house by the river and plants a seed from the pumpkin. See, that's, that's wild. That is so cool. Uh, you can click on take a closer look. It'll take you to uh, a bunch of literature, which is really, really cool. So you can literally go and find like, they've got all kinds of stuff from books for the family to uh, ancient literature you can read on this. So a uh, great connecting tool here. So now we're going to whisk over to Australia here. We're in the outback right now. And let's see, where am I in the outback? Uh, it's a beautiful place here, partly cloudy. Definitely in the outback, uh, looking at a mountain in front of me. Uh, and this will be the fourth one if you're looking at this. Uh, it looks like it's sponsored by Literacy Central. I'm not, but it looks like they're partnered with somehow. Uh, and so this, again, is connected to a lot of places where you can find literature for this, which is great. So uh, I'm all about reading, you guys know. So The Lizard Man and the Creation of Uluru. Okay, this legend is how the aboriginals uh, in Australia explain the creation of Uluru, uh, which is U-L-U-R-U, -U -U, Uluru, formerly called Ayers Rock. Okay, I'm at Ayers Rock. That's where I am. Uh, geological formation in the desert of Australia. The aborigines have been telling stories about the dream time. I've talked about this before, guys. About the dream time or the time of creation for tens of thousands of years. Since they have no written language, all of these stories have been handed down orally uh, from storyteller to storyteller. The Australian legend um, says that the crevices and caves in uh, Uluru uh, are where Aljania or Alin Alinja. God, these are hard to say, guys, especially in West Texas here. A-L-I-N-G-A, -A, Alinja. The lizard man tried to pick up the boomerang from under the rock formation. Interesting that the lizards that live nearby now are his spiritual descendants. Oh, that's pretty cool. I like that one. I like that one a lot. So this has a lot to do, you know, if, when you get into this, you can go look at Mount Yango over in Australia. The, the, you know, I, I tell this story a lot. The maker God, not the creator God, but the maker God of the clay creation, you know, the, the carbon creation is Baime. Um, and so uh, Baime was their maker God who descended in fire and smoke upon the mountain of Yengo. And he brought the religious law to them. Uh, and so what's interesting, same exact story or near identical, at least in the lore of it to Yahweh descending upon Mount Sinai in the Middle East um, with the Israelites. And so that, to me, is just a stark reminder that all of these mythologies, while they might be myths and legends, they are all based on some sort of historical event or truth. And they definitely, um, you had a lot of different peoples, thousands and thousands of miles apart, experience the same type of things and same creation stories the same great flood stories and so you know again what's that common thread it all ties together how can we better understand it and better understand the nature of the physical reality we live in so that we can step within ourselves and find that authentic reality the one that is right there underneath it all uh, so close to us yet so far away for so many people so i love this one that that's a beautiful one uh, now we get to Paul Bunyan here in America. So this tall tale or legend describes an unusually big and strong man, Paul Bunyan, and his enormous companion, Babe, the Blue Ox. The story says he was born in Maine, although folks uh, in Bemidji, Minnesota, think otherwise. Uh, he became a lumberjack like his dad and used his giant size and superhuman strength to clear forests. So this is... I mean, while this is a tall tale, um, it's pretty interesting because, you know, we've been talking about Book of Enoch, the Nephilim, the giants, which are the product of the extraterrestrial gods or angels or watchers or sons of God, whatever you want to call them, uh, within that biblically um, based timeline. And so they created these giant races and then they had their own offspring from that the flood was supposed to take a lot of them out but obviously we still have these legends of what we would call demigods in greek mythology 
And so anyway, it, it all starts to connect and really make uh, a beautiful story when you look at all of these. So Paul Bunyan is definitely one of my favorites. So uh, here we are on the Great Plains. This is a Native American legend. This is one that um, we're, I'm probably more familiar with around here. Uh, now being in West Texas, we didn't particularly have this tribe here, but we have similar legends around here. This is called her seven brothers. It's a native American legend. And it says this legend tells the Cheyenne Indian story of creation of the big dipper. The Cheyenne lived in the great plains of the United States. They moved around hunting bison in Montana, North and South Dakota, Wyoming, sometimes as far as south as Colorado. So they didn't quite make it down to Texas. But in this story, the bison chief demands that a girl leave her adopted brothers to join him, but they refuse to let her go. The bison stampede and the siblings uh, have to find a way to escape. Although the Cheyenne were nomadic hunters, meaning they moved their homes in teepees, to follow the bison, the Northern Cheyenne Indian Reservation was established in 1884, Nearly half of the 10,000 registered members of the tribe lived on the re live on the reservation now. This park in Montana, the First People's Buffalo Jump State Park, preserves one of the oldest known areas used for bison hunting in the Native Americas. Archaeological evidence suggests that hunters used this site nearly 3,000 years ago before they had horses. So, uh, really, really cool legend here. Um, and then it finishes and says... Uh, one way to hunt bison was to cause the herd to stampede over a cliff. That's why the term buffalo jump comes from. So, uh, again, I'm in uh, the state park here, which is really, it's First People's Jump State Park. So, let me fly over to that with Google Earth here. So cool the way you can fly around here. And, wow, it that's pretty cool. It's definitely just a, a flat plains fact it looks very similar to Amarillo Texas where I live so uh, lots of flat plains and then some plateaus in the distance nice overcast day here just checking out checking out the scenery there's a teepee there and then some ruins so kind of a sparse historical site but they do have a historical center there which looks pretty cool so definitely neat uh, to learn you know this legend um, especially living here in the American Southwest, uh, as you might call it. So now we're going to look at Romulus and Remus. You've probably heard this Roman legend. Uh, it is about the founding of Rome. Twin brothers Romulus and Remus were raised by a wolf after the basket that they were sleeping in as babies floated down the Tiber River. Uh, when they grew up, Romulus built houses on uh, Palatine Hill that became the city of Rome. Uh, all of this version didn't include uh, this idea. The boys are said to have been sons of Princess Rhea, Sylvia, uh, and Mars, the war god, making Romulus uh, and Remus characters from the Roman mythology. Children whose parents are gods are common characters in mythology like Thor and Norse mythology. There you go. So pretty interesting there. Uh, there's another cool legend you know, again, how does this all tie to Halloween? Well, we have all of these characters. We have all these legends and myths. And um, so I think it's just kind of cool to remember, you know, as we drive around uh, during Halloween and we see all of these, you know, you see these creatures down here, especially all the blow ups and stuff. I just drove by one earlier uh, and it's Scooby-Doo in somebody's yard. You know, Scooby-Doo deals with a lot of these legends and myths. And I find it fascinating. I just... I love all the imagery. I love black light artwork and stuff too. So that's why I made all of these. Uh, I thought I'd try something different today, but uh, I think it's pretty cool. So here's the adventures of Thor, the Vikings or Norsemen or Scandinavians. They lived in what is now Sweden, Denmark and Norway before these countries existed. They were gifted sailors and traveled around the North Atlantic establishing settlements their stories or sagas are what we now call north mythology norse mythology uh thor known as a superhero in the movies is the norse god of thunder uh, he was the son of odin and the chief of the gods thor's stepbrother loki is known for his mischief you guys if you've watched any marvel you know exactly what this is talking about again we're going to dig deeper into that uh, but here is the mythological uh, El Dorado. You guys may have heard this. You've probably seen it in Disney movies before. 
Uh, so this is a Colombian legend. Uh, it is from the Musica people of Colombia. A long time ago, Musica chief uh, found that his wife had been unfaithful to him. She ran away with their daughter and jumped into Lake Guatavana. Uh, let's see, G U A T A V I T A Guatavata Guatavata. Uh, the the chief was so sad to have lost his wife and daughter that he made offerings of gold and jewels to a magical serpent that lived in the lake to ensure the afterlife was happy. This offering became a ritual when the new chief took power. A Spanish conquistador, Sebastian de Benalcazar, uh, uh, um, heard this story and began searching for the lake. He called this place El Dorado, the golden one. So there's another myth and legend there. A giant serpent living in the lake. We hear giant serpents um, all the time, all the time. And uh, it's very, very interesting um, that serpents are are one of the deeper parts of our mythologies, and they're often demonized. Um, And unfortunately, um, that's not always right. You know, again, I I didn't finish, but the, the legend... Uh, you hear about Baime, the maker god, that they talk about in Aboriginal lore, the uh, actual creator that created all the energies and possibilities and the design of the universe, uh, is was a giant rainbow serpent, which I think is is beautiful. So, uh, representing to that you know continual timeline that we live in. So, I think that's pretty cool. So. This one's pretty neat. The Shipwrecked Sailor, an Egyptian legend. This legend, uh, or this story, was found in an ancient papyrus scroll in the Hermitage Museum in St. Petersburg, Russia. It describes a trip a sailor took from Egypt to Nubia, uh, or modern Sudan. Uh, To sail to Nubia, you either had to go from the Nile, which had six stretches of dangerous rapids, or sail to the Red Sea to Port Sudan, uh, if you were standing in Cairo and wanted to take the Red Sea route, you had to carry your ship through the desert of Koptos to Kazir. Uh, in this story, the sailor is shipwrecked on the island of the Soul in the Red Sea and befriends a giant serpent. Here's another serpent. You know, you have to ask yourself, why are there so many serpents in all of these legends all around the world? Like, it makes you wonder like were there literally entities that were manifesting this way or uh certain peoples from other systems that we we made gods you know i don't know it's it's pretty interesting uh in this story the sailors shipwrecked uh blah blah blah. let's see the small island in the red sea is off the coast near the town of bernice some legends describe it as being inhabited by serpents of the island being shrouded in a mist and hard to find. Maybe this is the island of the soul. That's pretty interesting. So, um, and they've got it marked on the map. You can actually zoom in, look at this little deal here. Uh, pretty, pretty rugged looking here. Let me do the 3D. I'll tell you what. Okay, it's got a mountain on it. That's pretty cool. Um, you can zoom in quite close and see a lot of stuff going on here. Um, beautiful island, lots of coral around it and blue lagoons. Looks like it might be a really pretty place to vacation actually. So very nice. So, um, anyway, uh, we'll get to number 11 and then wrap this up. Jason and the Argonauts, a Greek myth. You might be familiar with this one, but Jason is one of the myth, uh, one of mythology's greatest heroes in his story is one of the, the first recorded by ancient Greeks. The crew of his famous ship, the Argo, had superhuman powers and great wisdom. Uh, They traveled with him as he fulfilled his quest to find the Golden Fleece. This trip took him all over the Aegean, Mediterranean, and Black Seas. On their journey, they fought giants and monsters and encountered dangerous weather and boulders that smashed ships. Here, one of the important places on Jason's journey. So the map shows uh, Lol- Lolicus. Uh, Jason was the son of Aseon, the king of Lolicus, until Jason's wicked uncle, Peleus, took the throne away. 
His journey starts and ends here. This is the goal. Uh, let's see. To find the Golden Fleece and return home, Jason's crew sails from the Lolicus Thrace, perhaps modern day uh, Samothrace, and Helen's Pont, the modern day Strait of Dardanulus. Um, in, anyway, interesting. That goes on with more of the uh, geography. But yeah, this is a, a really, really pretty place that it's showing. Definitely has an established city and seaport and there's a football field here and a beautiful holy site where you can go to the top of the mountain which is apparently where i'm standing on google earth right now so pretty cool to be able to travel to these places kind of virtually like this i look forward to when the metaverse is out and we can actually go travel to some of these places and maybe when i can do it for reals that would be really cool so anyway i hope uh you guys have enjoyed this. That's That kind of wraps it up for the Google Earth lore. But one of the things I just wanted to remind everyone is obviously these come from somewhere. These come from uh, myth and legend that people experienced something to come up with these. People thought they saw something or people did experience something we don't experience anymore. Maybe we're in a new age, literally. Um, so it, it, I find it really, really interesting um, you know, that we're at this point in time where we can talk about all of this. We can look at the collection of mythologies. Um, it's pretty wild. So I hope you guys have enjoyed this. Uh, you know, don't be afraid to go check out all the lores and legends and myths because it, it helps us better understand the nature of reality. So, uh, and as you drive around for Halloween and check out all the blow ups and, uh, all the different, uh, uh, decorations and attractions that are around remember all of these come from places of someone experienced these at some point there's nothing new under the sun all ideas come from this divine consciousness um, and obviously we can make things as dark or light as we want uh, but a lot of times things have two sides of one coin so uh, where a serpent to one person might be evil and scary to another person it might be uh, a great creator bringing love and enlightenment to all. So uh, lots of different points of views, and I love talking about that on here. So thank you guys for joining today. I hope you have a beautiful afternoon. Uh, looking forward to jumping into a brand new series next week after Halloween. We're going to be getting into our gratitude series and begin to practice a lot of the things that we talk about on here, uh, begin that process of manifesting uh, but this has been a great month to just really open our minds to different myths and legends and lores. Try to understand the nature uh, of what humanity is and kind of where we come from. So anyway, I think I have one more. Here's one more. There, There's one more creepy photo. Uh, so anyway, Troy, what's up? Thank you for being here. Gene, thank you for being here. Uh, you guys do me a favor. Start sharing these when we're live so we can get more people I know uh, it's a weird time now. Sports are going on. It's fall. We've got football. We're still doing 11 a.m. and 3 p.m. Central Standard Time. So uh, even if you can't join live, please watch after the fact. It's going to be all over on my YouTube channel. You can find all my socials as well as all the resources uh, for our community, including the team membership. You can check out more info about that. I promise you guys are going to love it. It's it, We've got some cool stuff in that membership. Uh, right now through Halloween, it's 9 bucks a month. You can go check it out. Join our team. It stands for, uh, so Team T-E-A-M. So um, if you jump over there, by the way, for $9 a month, if you just go to cubcooker.com, C-U-B-K-U-K-E-R.com, uh, click on Become a Team Member. Then it'll take you over to a page and you can look at what that stands for. Make sure you align with that. If you align with our mission, this is going to be a great way that you can support it. Join it. You'll be locked in at whatever price you get it at, whether you get it at $9 or the regular price is going to be $59. So it will be going up incrementally toward that final price. So if you want in, get in. You'll stay locked in as long as you don't cancel so it stands for transcend, elevate, align, and manifest. Transcend your limitations. Elevate your consciousness. Align yourself with love and manifest your desired reality. That's what the team is about. That's what our community is about. And with that, you're going to get team monthly virtual meetups, private Facebook group, 
training video library, early access updates, free downloads, speaker sessions, and merch discounts, including but not limited to this value list as well as more or less depending on what the community needs. You're joining an active living ecosystem there. So it is going to evolve and change, but I promise that I will always serve you guys at the highest ability over there and be able to share a lot more candidly uh, what we can all do as a community to start activating all, all these concepts that I talk about every day. So um, let's see. Troy says, I'll be here every day, but the weekend. Well, thank you, Troy. And Steffi says, uh, sorry, I missed uh, most of this live. No worries. You can go check it out uh, over on the YouTube channel as well as Facebook uh, and Apple and Spotify and Anchor on the audio podcast. So, uh, But remember, guys, drive around as you guys enjoy Halloween with your families and friends. Be safe. And as you see all these symbols and all the different decorations and stuff, uh, remember what a tapestry we have and that all of this lore, again, we can twist it and make it real dark and creepy, but it also comes from a place of these stories originally meant something. All of these mythologies were to understand uh, the nature of reality. And so while they had historical basis, they might be expounded upon uh, to try to understand the nature of reality. So really, really cool stuff, guys. I hope you guys enjoyed it. You guys have a beautiful afternoon. I am going to see you tomorrow. Love you guys. Peace.